Brussels is a city known for the car. Not just the manufacturing, but also the traffic that comes along with it. However, things have been changing in recent years, and I wanted to experience what it's like to cycle in Brussels. With the help of two lovely bike shops, Ahuga Bike and Sark, I got to experience cycling in Brussels on both electric and acoustic bicycles. These local brands make high quality folding bicycles, and I had a blast riding them. Brussels has several types of infrastructure, from sidewalk level cycling paths to painted cycling lanes on the road. Some of them come in a shade of yellow, and others may be just dotted lines. When painted in red, they sometimes remind me of home, but these paths come with major differences such as not having an excessive number of speed bumps and continuity across side streets like many other cities do. When a bike lane crosses a vehicular slip lane, the slip lane is raised up to sidewalk level to slow down cars, while cyclists can carry on without any detour. Other times, they're shared with pedestrians, and it's clear that a mode of transport with less mass and speed is prioritised. Pedestrian priority points are designated with zebra crossings, and cyclists can bypass traffic signals at mid-block crossings. Intersection treatment is also nicely taken care of, with cycling paths continuing through, and signals are placed at the cyclist's eye level. Some places come with bike boxes to give cyclists a head start. Cycling lanes also continue at roundabouts, and some are protected. Multi-stage mid-block crossings for active travel provide more green time where conflict points aren't present, and help with segregation. An interesting typology is having cycling infrastructure in the middle of a carriageway. Tevuelan is a tree-lined road with two carriageways on each side, with a tram line and a bike lane down the centre. The small number of crossings make it a popular local route into the suburban region. Some big paved streets provide only bicycle shadows, but the road texture and geometry prevents fast driving, making it relatively safe for cycling. There are many ways to navigate cycling in Brussels. The option of using a map on the phone is well known, but there are other ways to do so without one. The cycling node wayfinding system marks junctions where paths cross, and a map of these nodes are available online. This makes it possible to cycle around the city with just numbers written on a post-it note. Here's another map for reference. Some signs include directions to other cycling trunk routes, as well as transport nodes such as metro stations. I wish that some of these signs could have text on where they lead to in addition to the numbers to make it easier for new users. Cycling infrastructure is not restricted to just dedicated cycling paths. They extend to cycle streets. Cycle streets are places where cyclists get priority and feature a 30 km per hour speed limit and drivers cannot overtake cyclists. This was formerly just a typical side access road for cars. Another example of a cycle street is along Louisa Land a major thoroughfare in the city. It's created by converting a lane for cars to a lane for bicycles. However, painting a cycling lane wasn't good enough, as high car volumes can scare away riders. So modal filters ensured that these cycle streets were only used by drivers accessing local destinations. It's not possible to head straight on in this cycle street, unless you're cycling. Cycle streets can also be implemented on smaller streets, such as this one. Besides cycle streets, there are roads that are exclusive for walking, cycling and public transport. And I like to refer to them as walk cycle ride corridors. Avenue de Lipodrome is a narrow street, 12 meters in width, that was once two wide lanes with mixed traffic. A few years ago, the city chose to make the southbound lane exclusive to walk cycle right, and restricted driving to the northbound lane. This improvement not only speeds up public transport, they also provide a clear path for emergency vehicles so they don't have to be stuck in mixed traffic. Walk cycle right corridors can be stretches that last around a block's length, but they can also exist as shortcuts in the city. 
Some streets in the city are one way due to their small size. But the small footprint cycling has allows contraflow cycling lanes to be made. These roads come with a one way sign with a small notice that excludes bicycles. Providing shortcuts for cycling help to reduce cycling distances and make cycling trips faster. Like how in the city centre, walking and cycling almost always takes the fastest route, while the car has to go the long way around. There are various types of people cycling in Brussels. Like in many other cities, there are people who cycle for sport, and there are people who cycle for leisure. There are also people who cycle for transport in various attires. When I was in Brussels, I enjoyed my mornings by getting a cup of coffee and heading to Stefania Plein to watch people cycling by. It's simply relaxing. Parking for bicycles in the city can be found on sides of the road. This used to be a car lot as recent as 2020. Some residential areas provide parking in bicycle boxes. It's also possible to combine bikes and public transport, with bike parking near metro stations. There's also parking for the Velo shared bicycles. Some stations like Boost Grand Plus provide underground bicycle parking right above the fare gates. On the other side of the station, there are double-tier bicycle racks, which are well-oiled and easy to pull down. In addition, there's also a parking facility with an additional layer of security. Some stations also come with bicycle stores, making it convenient for people who need a tune-up on the way to work. Full-sized bikes can be brought into the metro and low-floor trams outside weekday morning and afternoon peak hours. Folding bicycles can be brought in anytime. And here's how a sock bike can be folded. So yeah, that is a, a small little bike made by people from Brussels, for people from Brussels. Why do we make it so small? Because we don't have space to store it. We don't want to leave it outside during the night. Because it's not going to have a long vision if you store it outside. It's going to get older, faster. So when you go back home, you put it here like this, easily, simply, and you have a 12 kilo bike, really easy to move. Uh, it takes no space at home. I hope so, one day a bit of more sun, but I know it. <laughs> Thank you so much, it's brilliant. Making a car city cycling friendly is tough, so I thought of sharing strategies Brussels has used that left an impression on me. At various spots in Brussels, there are bicycle counters which collect cycle data. These counters work by using detector loops installed on cycling infrastructure. Each counter records the number of cyclists daily and annually, and this data is uploaded to an interactive site which can help with transport planning decisions. Making Brussels cycling friendly is part of the Good Move plan. The Good Move plan is one aimed at not just creating a good transportation network, but also good neighbourhoods to improve residents' quality of life. It acknowledges that car-centric roads aren't the future. Too many cars and no one moves. To tackle this, a planned network of routes for different modes of transportation was created. Three tiers were used, plus for long-distance travel, comfort to complement the plus routes, and district for short-distance travel within the neighbourhood. An online interactive map showcases the different priority routes for different modes of transport, including pedestrians, cyclists, public transport, heavy good vehicles, and cars. This helped to make travelling more efficient as a road with multiple priorities results in a road with no priority. At the heart of it is a road safety plan that's committed to Vision Zero, where every victim is one too many. The first step towards Vision Zero was a citywide 30 km per hour speed limit introduced in January 2021. This made it safer to cycle in places without cycling infrastructure. In a previously 50 km per hour zone, the average speed has decreased by 3 km per hour from 33.6 km per hour in 2020 to 30.1 km per hour in 2023. However, there are tremendous benefits. 
a reduction of noise levels between 1.5 to 4.8 decibels was recorded on streets that formerly had 50 km per hour speed limits. And in 2024, Brussels recorded the strongest decrease in road fatalities in Belgium, where the number of road deaths dropped from 21 in 2023 to 5 in 2024. Besides cycling, I like how there are intersections complete with pedestrian crossings for every leg, even in places where there are no traffic signals. The race junctions some of these have remind me of silver zones at home, with major differences being the lack of pedestrian fencing and the provision of pedestrian crossings. Having the second biggest pedestrian area in Europe, Brussels city centre is a pleasant place to stroll around. I cycled into the city centre via Maurice Lemonierland, where a lovely modal filter with potted plants made a smooth transition from a car street to a street for people. Sometimes modal filters don't have to look polished, and they still work. Interestingly, service vehicles still have access to pedestrianised areas through modal filters. These gantries lower when an authorised vehicle approaches it, preventing people from driving into the pedestrianised square. In a city that has small streets, the vehicles adapt to the city's size, and not the other way around. It's also nice to see space for cycling given back to pedestrians, and space for driving given to cycling. Near Alua metro station, cycling infrastructure that was on the sidewalk was shifted to the road, becoming a cycle street. The space that was formerly for bikes was freed up for more walking space. In residential areas like Stockholm, a shared roundabout outside the metro station makes it safe for pedestrians to cross anywhere. Instead of fencing up a street and limiting access to pedestrians, the street uses bollards to restrict car access. There are other types of infrastructure that I wish to try, such as the list of cycle highways and regional cycle routes that lead to the countryside. But that would be for another time. Before this video ends, I would give Brussels a mini scorecard using the 5 design principles for cycling infrastructure. The cycling network I experienced was well connected, with various types of infrastructure pieced together. Wayfinding through the node network made it easy to get around without a phone. However, as some parts of the city still do not have cycling infrastructure, missing links may be a challenge for new riders. That makes cohesion 4 out of 5. It was also easy to get around by bike. There were no detours or setbacks when cycling lanes were present, making cycling routes short and easy to navigate. This gives directness a 5 out of 5. Safety was adequate for me, with protected cycle streets and low speed limits. With 10% of all trips made by bike, the high number of cyclists made cycling safer, especially along unprotected cycling lanes. New riders, however, may not feel safe to use certain types of infrastructure. This gives safety a 4 out of 5. Cycling infrastructure in Brussels was smooth, no speed bumps and curb drops. The paths flow well, with priority for cyclists along side streets and dedicated waiting space. This saves energy and makes cycling infrastructure the more attractive option. That's 5 out of 5 for comfort. Walking and cycling often take the shortest and fastest route in the city, making it an attractive alternative to driving. Cruising through the human-skilled city, it was nice to be able to see storefronts, sidewalk cafes, and people enjoying their time in the city. I'd give attractiveness 4 out of 5. This brings the score of my mini cycling test to a total of 22 out of 25 for Brussels. To me, cycling in Brussels was inspiring, as it shows the next phase of active mobility development beyond building standard cycling paths. Changes made in recent years show that the streets we design shape the way we move. With 10% of all trips made by cycling in the city, Brussels would be a city known for the car, and is on its way to becoming a city known for cycling. I'd like to thank Ahuga Bikes and Saab for giving me the opportunity to experience cycling around Brussels on locally made bicycles, as well as Brussels Mobility for their sharing about cycling developments. Cycling in Brussels has inspired me to continue advocating for better active travel infrastructure, and I hope it has inspired you too. Thanks for watching to the end of this video. If you enjoy my content, come support me at ko forward slash
Thanks for watching and have a good morning.